Hello my friends, this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension and my gift to you today is this video about clearing fear and the unseen shackles that come with fear. Uh, some of you want to jumpstart straight to the guided meditation which starts at this time here. So first I will share some of my personal insights into fear uh, to give you a conceptual framework and then we will be clearing as much as possible in the guided meditation. So of course we all have experienced fear in our life and probably too much of it is still stuck with us and uh, just like a sock in your mouth uh, prevents you from laughing loud and uh, express yourself freely. Uh, fear has a very choking influence on our life. Personally, I had a great amount of fear as a teen, for instance, uh, thinking about my future. So, uh, you know, which path to take um, should I compromise or go for my dream? I wanted to be a photographer, you know, but not a wedding photographer, you know, more high end. And uh, would I have the talent for this? Um, and unfortunately, I always imagined myself not finding a flat, not finding this and that, all what could happen wrongly. And you know, so there was so much fear around it. Actually, uh, I experienced a panic attacks where the whole room started to spin and I had to go onto the street in the middle of the night. So much fear and panic came thinking about the future. Interesting, right? Uh, so I also experienced uh, a, a panic attack to my own surprise uh, when I had my verbal philosophical examination and uh, most likely I picked up some fear thought forms, you know, uh, that were floating around in the area. Uh, because, you know, in front of the examination room, probably for decades, people have been fearing. Um, so, you know, so this was like complete uh, hyperventilation and then of course the mind went blank, uh, completely blank. Uh, but I got out of it. I also peed myself out of fear as an adult in Kathmandu when I was attacked uh, by spirits whenever I closed my eyes. So they really looked like those masked little demons that you see in, in temple art, in Tibetan and Buddhist temple art. And uh, one more thing about uh, fear, let me just get this off the chest. Uh, Yes, dogs can smell your fear, especially if you salt yourself, but uh, what many people do not get is that dogs can feel your fear. You know, I mean, any human empath can. I mean, I do, and surely dogs do. You know, uh, most dogs are not only empathic, you know, but they are a telepath. You know, and just start thinking in pictures, you know, around your dogs and uh, see what happens, right? So my point is uh, probably primary uh, dogs will feel your fear, you know, because that's in the split seconds you can feel if somebody is afraid. Um, before the smell comes over, this may take a second or two before, you know, the whiffs, the, the molecules travel that far. So dogs feel as empath. So let's just go a little bit more into the definition here. And uh, yeah, so fear is a negative feeling in your body or maybe mental imagery uh, that we do not know how to alleviate. Uh, it generally accompanies with a tightness in your heart and the solar plexus uh, going all the way to soling yourself. So tightness of heart is definitely, in my opinion, you know, the heart chakra closing and solar plexus is where your power chakra closes, you know, your willpower. 
and of course soiling yourself uh, makes you less appetizing uh, for your victors, so to say. Uh, <clears throat> uh, also, I mean, needless to say, here really, really, really lowers your vibration and is therefore used by a host of entities that live of our lower astral energies, energies, you know. So the Phobia family has a, had a bad reputation, you know, as they attract fear to anything that it is attached to, like arachnophobia, you know, or claustrophobia, um, which uh, claustrophobia, uh, you know, fear of, uh, you know, being encased in, in tight spaces, so uh, it comes from buried, being buried alive. Uh, I've had probably 20 past life regressions where people got buried alive. It's uh, quite common, maybe even 30. It's, it's very common and um, it was part of ceremonial death, sometimes of sacrifice, many times entourages, um, uh, you know, got uh, killed, uh, some of them buried alive. Um, of course, fear of dogs, you know, if you get uh, bitten and torn apart by dogs. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, fear also has some maladjusted siblings along the timeline. So, fear in relationship to the future, you know, can be seen as dread, you know, worrying about what might happen. And, of course, terror as it's happening. You know, I can't believe it is happening. And a horror, if you replay that in your mind. And uh, I still remember uh, when I was a little boy, I uh, had to spend about half an hour in the waiting room, you know, lawyer's waiting room, uh, with a man that got trapped in collapsing buildings during the Second World War. And he probably, you know, told that story six times, you know, how he got trapped there for a few days. And uh, he was just stuck in a loop. And I mean, he was aware of it. He apologized. Um, so uh, this man, you know, was in constant fear and pain. You know, this is a mental prison, a mental hell that he was living on. Um, of uh, course, you know, uh, there are nightmares um, that uh, were definitely, you know, designed to scare us. I know for myself as a child, uh, when I had a fever, I had nightmares with uh, visuals I've never seen before. So there were projections. I even saw a devil's face, you know, nice, bright and red. I've never seen it colored, you know, there was no TV. So I kind of know what I saw, which books I've seen. I've seen devil pictures, you know, in a cartoon book, but not in red. I did not know that. Pigeons flying backwards. <laughs> Big stone rollers, you know, rolling over you, you know, one after the other. So every 20 seconds there was another one coming at you ominously. Uh, so this implants a lot of fear, you know, into a little child that's maybe two to three years old. You know, this happened to me. And so some entities were really, you know, trying to uh, uh, scare me, I have to say. Uh, and it probably has happened to you, too. Uh, so yeah, so much about fear. Uh, but uh, fear uh, seems to have... Uh, you know, uh, an important role. So uh, if the mouse, you know, would not have fear of the cat, it would soon be out of the gene pool, and, and only the fearful mouse can procreate. So the animal survival fear acts like a bodyguard that says, uh, do not poke the bear, do not tell your partner that they could lose a few, you know, etc. So, uh, if you see fear as a functioning for avoidance of pain, uh, then most traumatic experiences should create fear. And that is pretty much also my experience. 
<clears throat> so some say that fear is the opposite of love. Uh, I do not know about that. I uh, would consider hate as the opposite of love. But what controls others better? Fear or love? Or is it the fear of losing love? So, what is guiding your life? Fear or love? So, do you go to work because you love it? or because you don't want to be homeless and live out of your car. Uh -huh. So is fear based on past trauma? And is fear the avoidance of the repetition of that trauma? So there is a problem with this, because you know, fear is a fight or flight axis, right? Either, you know, you, you fight back or you run or you freeze. Okay? Freeze or run uh, or fight, you know, does not apply to all life situations, right? Uh, just, just like uh, Kung Fu does not solve most of your life's problems either. You know, you may have seen lots of movies where this is kind of being portrayed this way, but uh, you know, uh, you probably get into a lot of trouble if you're trying to solve your problems with Kung Fu. So, you know, relaxing and to overcoming, you know, this animal instincts is, is quite important. And if, you know, the adrenaline, you know, from the stress is not used for fight or flight, uh, it's just uh, many times, or oh, not the energy from this, right? Uh, so when you get like all hyped up, you know, out of fear, uh, there is a lot of chi created. You know, we see out in Alin, of course, there's also chi, life force created. And um, this can be absorbed by the attacker, you know, just like a lizard that, uh, you know, snaps off his tail as an offering and you know, sidetrack for the attacker. Uh, this offering of chi uh, is uh, many times accepted, and uh, that is exactly the thing that gets the bullies high, you know. Uh, and uh, there is a saying that uh, power is the ultimate enjoyment. You know, uh, first people you know seek sexual fulfillment, but then beyond that. You know, is power is even greater than that. Of course, uh, they're not talking about love here. <laughs> it's a different trajectory, right? Uh, so whenever there is a negative arousal, uh, we bleeding out lots of chi. You know, the same with anger. Fear and anger, you know, you bleed chi like anything, and you are going to be exhausted afterwards. And so that's why fear is also being cultivated, you know, with uh, humans for, it's called luge, it's like a psychic food, you know, of a low vibration. And so therefore, um, some nightmares are induced to create fear, and not just an expression of the subconscious, you know, that we have conflict and inner fear. I mean, those things also exist, uh, where you have like a, a psychological, you know, vent ventile or blow off, but uh, in your dreams or a commentary, but uh, some of them are just induced by other entities that like to harvest your fear. And they can look into your uh, fear, they can look into your subconscious and see what movies scared you the most or what incidents in your past scared you the most. They, they know your weak, your weak spot. The more people hold on to life out of fear at the time of death, 
the more the trauma sticks and the ghosts will result. In, in many of our traumatic past life, soul fragments do not pass on and remain in the astral. They remain in the astral and do not go into the higher vibration. Right? And these ghosts, uh, with their fears, uh, function in a way as uh, jailers, you know, keeping us trapped you know, with their fears. Uh, they whisper into our ear. Actually, uh, they are generating a part of your inner dialogue. Remember, you are not your thoughts right? uh, that you're picking up. So they're like, uh, do not travel. Do you know, you got robbed and killed in foreign lands. Or don't trust men. You know, I got dumped with 10 kids at the truck stop. Be careful being famous. Their envy destroyed my life. Do not speak your opinion. They burnt and tortured me. So we may not hear their voices. Some of you will. But I mean, if you tell the wrong person, you're called to schizophrenic. Uh, but most of us uh, feel these emotions of fear and dread, uh, you know, being triggered in certain situations. And uh, it is this jailer aspect of fear that we want to clear through past life regression and uh, more, uh, uh, which will be uh, very, very uh, liberating. So. Before we get into this uh, guided meditation, you know, I just want to point out some principles that I found uh, will support the success of any guided meditation. Uh, for instance, uh, gems like obsidian and tourmaline uh, will be helpful uh, when you have them at your root chakra, for instance. Um, rose quartz is good around your heart chakra, so you maybe have a a t-shirt or a military type shirt with chest pockets or your bra with rose quartz is good. Uh, hematites are good at your socks <laughs> to keep you even more grounded. Uh, quartz crystals in hand and I, I recommend the divine symbol um, uh, that you can find on my website. Let me just show you. I have one right here. I have my water on it. So this is the divine symbol. Highly recommended. You can find it on my website and I have a video about it also. It's based on the platonic solids. And uh, also, uh, you know, so yeah, sitting on this is awesome. Uh, and it's free. Uh, another one is anointing your chakras with essential oils, you know, like lavender for the crown uh, and so on. Or, um, yeah, root chakra, definitely if you have ruby, you know, put it there. Um, but also, you know, smudge clearing or incense clearing or a bath. Bath is, of course, more potent with smudge and incense. And even better is a massage, especially if you have a higher vibrational massage therapist and, uh, you know, a yoga set, or at least some breath of fire. If you do 50 minutes of breath of fire before the session, oh my God, you're going to be <laughs> having a wonderful time. So uh, just uh, sit now in a comfortable office chair and uh, balance your body so it stacks up nicely. Um, you can also do the Sufi grind. I like to do the Sufi grind and float around, you know, if you have a good back. So you can adjust better the, the Kundalini. Some of you will lay down, but uh, some of you then also will pass out. You know, when they lay down, you're so stressed out. Uh, <laughs> you know, once you relax, boom, you're out. So if you want to know what's going on, you know, you better sit up. Also, you know, um, you should probably breathe a lot more, you know, which will increase the experience. Uh, then, of course, you know, use earbuds or some nice headphones to cancel out outside noise. And it's just, it's a much better 
sound quality. Uh, for sure, you, uh, do not drive, you know, or operate heavy machinery if you're on the podcast. No, this is going to space you out. Uh, plus, uh, smile like an idiot. I mean, this is uh, quite expensive. Maybe you're uh, important. It's not expensive, important. Um, because, you know, unless you smile, you cannot vibrate in a certain love vibration and uh, much of that uh, meditation will just not even vibrate with you so it's really important to smile like an idiot <clears throat> also you don't ha you do not have to repeat any affirmations or translate uh, for your spirit guides uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, align with what i'm saying uh, and say amen or yes, you know, uh, whatever, uh, any gesture of agreement uh, when I say amen. Uh, plus, uh, be in a childlike state of innocent uh, doing the guided meditation. Uh, you know, reside in your heart, smile like an idiot. If you reside in your head and are cynical, <laughs> you're just wasting your time here. And uh, yeah, just uh, but pay attention to what pops into your mind even if it does not make sense at the moment. You know, many times, even when I work with my clients, they're like, oh, I'm seeing this here. This is strange. I cannot explain this. So I'm just making this up. No, 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 no. You know, these things are important. Just don't judge them at that time. Later on, you can always research this or ask me, right? Uh, also, uh, if you're laying down, uh, maybe put one hand onto your heart and another hand onto your solar plexus. Uh, you can have crystals, you know, in your hands at the same time, and that is generally very, very nice. If you have amethyst, put it at the crown chakra. Um, another thing now, uh, when we connect, and I say organic, I mean um, we will sidestep any artificial overlays. For instance, with the sun, um, sunlight is being filtered through uh, chemtrails and also filtered through all kinds of electromagnetic frequency. There is basically no frequency range that is not being used by humans right now for communication, you know, in the whole spectrum right now. So... <clears throat> Um, all these distortions we like to sidestep when we say organic, also distortions in terms of conceptual distortions, right? When you think of the sun, we may just think of a, a nuclear reaction and not of a personality or of a source of chi or like a wormhole or stargate, right? I mean, there are so many concepts. Are some of them misleading, you know, some of them out of proportion. So all this we sidestep when we ask for organic. Okay, so now close your eyes. And smile. And we connect now to organic absolute source. And to your own personal highest self, organic, and also to our spirit guides that have been approved by high self, all the way up to source, organic, and to Milky Way galaxy, to the beings there that are enlightened, that love you unconditionally, organic, and then also this big group consciousness of Milky Way galaxy. Mm -hmm. Smile, smile, smile. Mm -hmm. And we also connect to the sun. It's big consciousness, organic. And to the earth. And the dimensions here and the elements. And all the beings in this realm that still love us unconditionally. Thank you for coming. Amen. And we ask that everything that happens in and from this meditation here is going to be for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. We ask that we are completely protected in every aspect, uh, that no misconceptions affect us, uh, 
that uh, we are our energies do not get hijacked in any way or stolen or corroded or contaminated or misused for energy stealing or black magic. A also there to be no undue cording or anything else that is not approved by our own high selves. Amen, amen, amen. And connect to the earth, mother. Just imagine that you just inhale her love from the bottom of your body. And on the exhale, you send your love down to her. Deep, deep down to her. You go back and forth. Make sure you open your legs and the bottom of your spine. And you breathe all the way in till no more air fits in. And then all the way out. Back and forth. And now, put the tongue at the palate. And on the exhale, you take that love that you're pulling up from the Earth Mother and push it out the top of the head. Try to reach all the way to the ceiling. And this will activate your connection with the heavens. This means how your dimensional existences. Uh, your spine as well as your chakras are like a modem and an antenna that connects you with all the different realms, with all the different dimensions of frequency ranges, or octaves, you to say. And now we ask the higher dimensionals that love us to send their love into us. And on the exhale, you send your love all the way back to them. Just go back and forth. All the way in, all the way out. Deep, sweet breathing. Smile like an idiot. I breathe like a skin diver. And now we also pull the love from the heavens as well as from the earth into our heart on the inhale, on the exhale, we expand our love in the heart. And just fill our heart with this beautiful chi and expand our heart like a sun. And we ask, our helpers, you know, the divine angels or other divine beings, depending on your cultural backgrounds, they have got different names, symbolism. But we ask them, or we ask source or your own high self, depending on your belief system again, to clear as much as possible of all the pain that you're still carrying in your heart. Now, amen. And to also clear any Anunnaku, Draco, Grey, Magicians or other predatory cords and devices and any other technology from every level of our being, any incarnation, time or dimensions, now for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent ones. Amen. And to make sure you agree, Keep breathing and smiling and observe the shift of energy which should come around now. Mm -hmm. And now you ask your own personal divine consciousness to be kind of in front of you, your high self. 
It could be androgynous, just a radiant light. Many of them will feel it. It could be also humanoid, even male or female form. And just that doesn't matter so much. Uh, just ask it to be in front of you now. Amen. And smile. And let's just create a, a quick code and let's ask them, you know, as a yes. Would be a flow of energy from the heart towards the head. Of course, thumbs up, smile, head nodding, you know, everything, this will be fine. But as a default thing, you know, flow from the energy to the head. Let's please give us a clean yes now. Amen. And it's of course like a euphoric feeling. If you didn't get it, just ask again. Let's have it a little stronger now. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now we ask for a no, and a no is the flow of energy from the heart towards the feet, kind of a downer feeling. Mm -hmm. So please give us a no now. Amen. Uh -huh. And maybe a little stronger for some of you that didn't feel it, so let's give us a no now, a lot stronger. Amen. All right, so I hope you got it. If not, you know, work on this or just go along or use a pendulum instead of your own, <coughs> your own, uh, you know, kinesthetic uh, perception. Mm -hmm. Let's just ask, you know, with some very easy questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, have, you know, have you inherited fear uh, from your mother? Yes or no? Uh -huh. Now also ask if you inherited fear from personal past lifetimes. Yes or no? Well, for some of you, this may be something new. For some of you, that's an old head. And now let's just ask, uh, is the majority of your fears that you're still having from past lifetime or from this lifetime? Yes or no? And now ask, have you inherited fear from your ancestors? Yes or no? And now you probably will get maybe some memories that will pop into your mind or some concept that suddenly come up. So don't judge them, you know, don't dig for them, just stay in your heart. So what is the worst fear that you still have from this life's childhood? And ask where in your body are you carrying this? And now, what is the worst fear from past lifetime, childhood? And now ask, what is your worst fear from your teen years? And now ask whether you also have a lot of fear from being bullies, bullies. And now ask whether you also have a lot of fear from past lifetime programming when you got beaten or raped 
or tortured in this or past lifetimes, yes or no? And now ask, what is the worst fear that's still haunting you in this your adult life? Some of our fears, they come from overgeneralizations, like I cannot trust adults or I cannot trust men. Which is your worst overgeneralization fear? Now ask, do you carry substantial uh, fear from news? You know, the daily news, so to say, yes or no. Now ask if you also carry substantial fear for movies and other mass media, right? Horror, slashes, etc. Yes or no. And now ask whether you also carry fear, you know, inherited, you know, from your parents and also from their stories that they told when you were young. Yes or no? And now ask, uh, what do you fear most about death? You know, what's the worst? death that you could imagine. Well, let's just ask what you fear, not what you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And as we are sniffing out, you know, all your fears, did you ever suffer from panic attacks? Yes or no? And now ask, uh, did this uh, fear energy come from your personal history or is it from somebody else that you just picked their garbage up? So is it personal history, yes or no? Or did you pick uh, somebody else's energy thought forms or soul fragments up, yes or no? Now let's just investigate a little further. Do you still have any fear or stuck soul fragments? That means ghosts around the issue of fear of missing out. Yes or no? Or do you have any around fear about being forgotten and left behind? This happened actually in quite many past lifetimes, yes or no. And now ask about fear of being misunderstood. But sometimes it costs us our life. Are we still having ghosts and soul fragments and trauma around that? Yes or no? Now I ask if there's fear with you about remembering. Sometimes, you know, we suppress horrible memories.
And of course, while we mention those things, we ask our spirit guides, our high self and the assisting angels or other divine beings that work with us, that work with our high self, to keep releasing those, you know, programming to escort any ghost and soul fragments into ascension temples from which, you know, they will be taught forgiveness they will be reunited with lost loved ones and then released in the heavens. So we ask that this be set up now uh, while we are continuing so that there is not too much build up of fear. So many times when our life changed in past lifetimes, uh, things did not work out so well. So. Uh, did we have, do we have fear still, a lot of fear around change, yes or no? And ghost around this, so let's have this released. Mm -hmm. And how about fear of not knowing, right? This goes from snipers. <laughs> Or uh, fear of being poisoned, you know, everything that's just looming or little monsters as kids. Many of us were controlled by these so-called stories who kept us in line. So we like to clear all these fears. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. And now really a really big one, you know, do we still carry fear and trauma or not about not remembering? And I would say much of it is not remembering our connection with Godhead or with our space brothers where we came from, you know, our ancestors, you know, our heritage. I asked, do we still carry fear around this, yes or no? Oh yeah, we like to have this fear released and then please uh, just give us grace so uh, that we can yeah, clear this, clear this, forgive, be reunited. Amen. Amen. And there's a lot happening there. And of course, there's probably also fear around new relationships in the past, you know. So many just went sour, or sometimes really bad. So uh, there's a lot of fear about everything, you, right? the unknown, so to say. So we like to have this cleared. Of course, we would like to have honed instincts. <laughs> they don't want to be naive. <laughs> and then probably we also clear, have a, a lot of fear for loved ones you know, separation from them, uh, fear of their well-being, you know, things that we cannot control and influence. So I like to clear that too. I mean, it's surely not helping them, <laughs> having this fear projection to them, you know, because your fear will attach to them. So uh -huh. think loving thoughts, not fearful thoughts. And then, of course, fear of the future. So we probably have lots of that too, what the future will bring, especially nowadays. You know, we don't know the future. How will we have a job? How we will live? How we will survive? Where will we sleep? How long can you live in a car? Right? What if, what if, what if? So let's clear all those fears from the future. You know, they come from the past and we like to have that clear to as much as possible in and of course fear of the future is also new places if you carry you know moving somewhere new new territories <laughs> uh, did not always work out that well because there were already established people there and you know territorial fights disputes etc so we clear all those fears from those we asked. Also any stuck soul fragments, probably a lot of them got killed, a lot of us got killed and are stuck. So we asked for special ascension teams to assist them now. Amen, amen, amen. Let's so please assist them with forgiveness. Amen, amen, amen. 
And of course, then there is also fear of powerlessness, you know, where we just were a slave, you know, at the whims of others. Our lives maybe got wasted for nothing. So these kind of fear we like to clear now. Amen, amen, amen. And then there's also the fear of power, of having power. Uh, because uh, then, you know, you also have powerful enemies and there's a lot of struggle. Uh, so lots of us got traumatized in those lifetimes and uh, fearful and don't want you to be powerful anymore. So we like to have those clear too. Brought to the heavens. Amen. Amen. And of course, with uh, power, loss of power, many times can came the fear of losing possessions and attachment. It happened so many times. You know, Second World War, you know, all the people, the Germans from the East, you know, came to the West, they lost everything. So a lot of relatives got died there, you know, so, so many uh, people got driven off their lands, you know, the Native Americans, oh my God, just, what happened to them? A lot of native people got just pushed off their land. So and that was us, you know. We were the pushers and we were the ones being pushed, you know, experiencing both sides of the fence sooner or later. Yeah. Also, let's clear all the fear of poverty and ghosts that are stuck on that. Amen. And of course, also any fear of rape. And believe me, you know, we probably all got raped. At least in past lifetimes. And of course, any fear about getting killed. Amen. And of course, this killing is like getting tortured. Right? That was the candy on top of killing. So let's have those fears clear too. Amen, amen, amen. And anybody of our, probably if you got tortured, that soul is stuck, that ghost is stuck. So we we'll asked the angels, especially Archangel Michael, to bust them loose. Anybody trapped there, clear them, have teach them forgiveness. Clear their fear, whatever is still calm as they bring them into the heaven. Then the fear of anybody drowning, you know, some could swim a long time. And also any fear of being buried alive. This happened to many of them, you know, in collapsing building and burning buildings as well as in grave sites, you know, on purpose or ceremonially as a sacrifice. Horrible death. Like to have all those ghosts escorted into the heavens, helped into the heavens and any curses clear. And then also any fear that comes from high-tech enslavement, just like AI. And of course, also military training. You know, any military training from past lifetime, this lifetime, parallel lifetimes, like uh, any uh, yeah, uh, trauma-based training that creates a lot of fear. Clear, 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 clear. Yeah, some special angels too help with that. And also, you know, inform the Galactic Federation of Light and other inst institutions and light beings that this be corrected and not happen again. Amen, amen, amen. And of course, you know, we also have our pet fear. So let's, uh, you know, ask 
Hope that this pet fear be cleared and any ghosts that are stuck around their thoughtful curses, vows around this also be cleared right now. Amen. And now, uh, let's call in on all the past life ghosts that are still carrying fear and smile, 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 really smile. You don't want their pain to attach to them. Mm -hmm. And we asked you know, our Ascension teams, or my Ascension teams at least, uh, their volunteer angels and other light beings, to reunite them with their loved ones and to alleviate their suffering right now. Amen. And let's just ask, you know, uh, Ballpark, how many are there? Amen. Oh, your number will pop into your mind. It's not really important. You're not buying a car or mortgage in your house here. Mm -hmm. And let's ask, you know, get an idea how many, like, are human ancestors of those? And how many of them are ancestor star family? Now. And how many are from human trauma, mass mind? And now let's all, you know, really pay attention and align with this spirit, you know, divine angels of source of God. Please release all hooks, devices, chains, and other forms of bindings and limitations like rings, plates, spikes, spells, curses, contracts, promises, vows that were put unto me, the body, mind and spirit complex by my father or, or by any other beings uh, you know, in my body even. And this also includes structures, thought forms, devices, entities, offerings, orientations, effects associated with these following curses across all incarnations, all space, all time, all parallel realities, parallel universes, alternate realities, alternate universes, all planetary systems, all source systems, all dimensions and the world. Please clear those nows for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. And then after they have forgiven, you know, bring those entities into the heavens. Amen. Amen. Now. And you just keep smiling like an idiot and take that earth love from the earth from your roots and on the exhale send it into the heavens. Keep on smiling and breathing your love into the heavens. And now we ask the most potent spirit guides to clear all the baggage from them, all the fears and other pain, you know, from whatever negative life experiences that they had. This could be also curses, promises, vows, uh, negative implants, whatever that is. Also hooks and barbs and claws and cages we like to have cleared too. Now, aim, aim, aim. And again, please clear all the baggage from them now. Amen, amen, amen. And you probably will feel uh, this energy lifting out of you, especially in your back. And while this is going on, let's just uh, 
do some more question and answers with your own divine inner guidance. Let's ask, is your amygdala being artificially stimulated for fear by other beings, yes or no? And if yes, we asked, you know, Source, Archangel Michael, maybe Lord Shiva, depending on who are the protectors of your uh, tradition, to clear any implants, any negative vortexes, or other tech, like uh, resonance uh, used uh, to manipulate uh, you. Now, amen, amen, amen. And through our meridians, um, there also uh, can be fear-like states created. Uh, it's a little complicated, uh, but uh, ask uh, where your meridians are being manipulated to create fear in you, yes or no. And let's have those entities, or those samskaras, those programs cleared now. Amen, amen. And maybe, you know, some of you might be able to see it, ask to be shown where they are or where they were. Now I also ask, are there any vortexes created by black magic through which fear is being dumped into you, yes or no? And now we have to have all this cleared by the most potent angels or divine beings. And do we have still ghosts that are following us around that are the victims of ritual abuse, yes or no? I'd like to have those liberated and cleared and their baggage cleared in. Do we still have fear of alien abduction and examination? Yes or no? And for some of you there might be a lot of fear, animal fear, so to say, come up. And we like to have those aspects of us cleared and this you know, fear released. And actually those transgression brought to the attention of, you know, the authority of the spiritual authorities now. Amen, amen, amen. Now let's ask, do we have any fear that has been triggered by, like, um, parasitic entities, so-called astral critters? Yes or no? And for some of them that are you that are psychic, that are seers, you know, we ask that to be shown where they are. And then we ask your spirit guides, you know, all the way up to source to please clear those. They are not allowed, right? Let's have those cleared. Amen, 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 amen. <coughs> And now, while this is being cleared, ask whether you have any fears being triggered by reptilian entities, yes or no? And again, we ask the divine spiritual authorities to remove their influence from you. Amen, amen, amen. And now I ask whether there's any fear triggered by subterranean entities with you, yes or no? And let's have those clear too, amen, amen, amen. Now 
Now let's ask if there's still any fear triggered, you know, in you or through you by other alien entities like E.T., yes or no? Now let's do a prayer for protection. And first of all, I release any resistances to the physical dimension, and I choose to experience the divine magic of life with enthusiasm from now on. Amen. And I also now clear any guilt, any fear, any shame, any false modesty, or vows of suffering, of martyrdom, and self-sacrifice that are blocking me from peace, freedom, joy, enlightenment, and happiness. Amen, amen, amen. I also release any judgment and resistance to my human physical body and emotional bodies. Amen. Amen. I also release any tension in my body caused by fear. Amen. 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 I also release any fear of being wrong or for not being perfect at all times. Now. Amen, amen. I completely integrate now into my physical body on all levels. I'm a being of love and light and then allow myself to be who I truly am and who I'm becoming. And so it is. Amen. And now you slip back all the way into your toes, into your fingertips, align at your spine, all the subtle bodies align, get replenished, get cleared, filled with light. We ask all our lifetimes or soul fragments that can come back to you now for the highest good to come back. Amen. And one, two, three. You are grounded now and you can open your eyes. Hey, my friends, uh, welcome back. <clears throat> so, um, well, I hope you feel lighter. Um, so there's a lot of clearing going on. Please drink a lot of water, at least a liter or a quarter of water, probably more. If you get a headache, drink more water. Um, of course, fear, you know, creates a lot of ghosts. And if you get plagued more by ghosts, uh, I have a specific video on how to clear ghosts. Of course, if you're new to this whole thing, you might need some guidance. And I do private sessions. Uh, just uh, take it easy now. You know, it's again, drink water. Um, you're going to be introspective, probably. Uh, do not drive your car. And um, when you feel like it, go over it again. You know, if you have more fear, uh, you probably uh, will feel more freedom in your own expression, less self-sabotage uh, as you progress on this path. Um, if you... Uh, you know, I like this. Uh, if you respond well to the guided meditation, I strongly recommend you check out my other ones. The, you know, people consider them uh, very potent, at least the ones that react well to them. And if you can afford, you know, treat yourself to a session with me. Um, I'm very affordable. Um, you know, send me an email, uh, uh, please. Uh, and 
I love you. Smile like an idiot. Namaste.